you are on a budget and you're trying to feed your family without breaking the bank because you don't have that much to spend, I am here to help you with that today. This is part two, week two, a continuation of the video I made a week ago, feeding a family for $25 a week, which is what I used to spend for my family of four back in 2007. Now, obviously, you're not gonna find boneless, skinless chicken breasts for 99 cents a pound anymore. You're not gonna find ground beef for 99 cents a pound anymore. So it will cost more now. However, I showed you last week a grocery haul of $69 and an entire meal plan, including stock ups for the whole month. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out down below. We started building a pantry. We got all the ingredients to make homemade bread, to make pancakes, oatmeal. So let's kick it off this week with breakfast ideas. Now, of course, I have the oatmeal still from last week. So oatmeal is always an option. I did check out the sales for this week and they have Yogurt, the Danimals yogurts are $1.97 for this large package. I thought it would be fun to make homemade pancakes. Top it with the yogurt. Our fruit for this week is strawberries because those are on sale. I'm basically leaving the rest of the produce alone today, like the fruits, because nothing is cheap enough for me to be able to fit it into my budget. So I have two pounds of strawberries, this large package of Danimals, the oatmeal, and all the fixings to make pancakes. So breakfast for the week are oatmeal, homemade pancakes, yogurt and strawberries in some combination of that form. It could be the pancakes are topped with strawberries. The pancakes are topped with yogurt and strawberries. It could be a bowl of yogurt topped with strawberries. And because I always like having eggs on hand, I was thrilled to find these free range organic dozen eggs for $2.49. So I am picking these up as well. And because I am making homemade bread this week, bought everything last week, I wanted to do a breakfast version uh, with like a cinnamon raisin kind of a thing. So I'm I'm here in the raisin section. Why are raisins expensive these days? Let's take a look at this. They play the music very loud in this store. And you might be wondering why I'm wearing a jacket in the middle of June. And that's because it froze last night. Yes. The dried cranberries are $2. This 10 ounce bag of raisins is $2.89. This 12 ounce box of raisins is $2.59. The only thing cheaper I see are these boxes for $1.59, but are more expensive per uh, unit measurement. So we'll go with this box. Obviously not gonna use the whole box in a week, so this will be another like pantry stock up for the next month, but it makes a delicious like cinnamon raisin artisan bread that you can slice and have for breakfast or a snack or whatever. I'll show you the bread at the end of this video, okay? So let's put this in the cart. I need a quieter aisle. I'm in the packaged snacks aisle, and this is not something I normally purchase especially at this time in my life when I had no money for snacks like this, but the goldfish crackers are $1.29 today, so I thought we could get one of those. Who has tried the Old Bay goldfish? I've never seen this before, but let me tell you what, toddlers and goldfish, it's just, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It's just a combination that wins. We have breakfast taken care of, let's move to lunch ideas. Now, like I said in last week's video, lunches are very simple at my house. They are leftovers from the dinners previously because if you make an entire dinner for like family of six, but you only have two adults and a two-year-old and a baby, you're not going through the whole meal. So we frequently have leftovers for lunch and then we'll do sandwiches, maybe like a homemade Lunchable situation with some fruit for lunches. They're very, very simple and very little I need to buy because it's basically sandwiches, <laughs> leftovers from dinner. So, with breakfast and lunches taken care of and I got my goldfish for the snacks, let's move on to dinners. This is gonna be the most expensive part of the grocery shopping. And since I know you guys are on a budget and watching every penny, I would like to thank Upstart for sponsoring today's video. They are here to help you save money on your interest rates. It's such an easy thing to save money on. Let me tell you about them real quick. Saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial independence. But the interest month after month after month, it can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. And that is where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. So far, Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. And that is something I can get behind. I know early in our marriage when Dave and I were trying to pay off our heavy student loans, getting those out of our monthly budget was a huge task that took forever to tackle. So consolidating your high interest debt into one 
easy payment with a low interest rate can help anyone take charge of their personal budget. You can check out your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. And one of my favorite things about Upstart is that they don't just look at your credit score. They look at your income, your employment history, and other information provided in your loan application. And you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check out your rate today at upstart.com slash FFM. That is upstart.com slash FFM to check your rate today. Don't forget to use my link down in the doobly-doos. It's the first link below. That way they know that I sent you. Go to upstart.com slash FFM. Thanks to Upstart. And let's get back to more budget grocery shopping. Okay, back to dinners and basic ingredients I like to buy every week. So I did get a gallon of milk, was able to find it on clearance, and I couldn't afford butter <laughs> when I was shopping like this. So I did buy margarine. Is butter better for you? Yes, it is. Is it four times the cost of this? Also, yes, it is. This is something that I purchased, so I will purchase it today to reenact what I did then. As I'm putting together some dinner ideas, I did find this two pounds of ground beef and ground pork combo for $4.59. This makes this $2.30 per pound. And with a family this size, this is easily two meals. Oftentimes, actually, I would do like three quarters of a pound, so this could potentially be three full dinners with this. Another one of the meals I like to make often, it's called pasta jambalaya. It's not really reminiscent of jambalaya, but it is delicious. And you need a smoked sausage, kind of like this. This is way more expensive than it used to be. I think this is like 350, which is the cheapest one I could find today, but it's so good. And I think you guys will love it that we're just gonna buy it anyway. I also need diced tomatoes, a can of black beans, an onion, and Cajun seasoning. So let's go grab those ingredients now. It's this one every time. Another dinner I used to make often back then were crepes, and not sweet crepes, but savory ones. I have everything I need to make them, flour, eggs, milk, and a blender. Could also do it in a bowl with a whisk, but I like the blender. You need a condensed soup of some kind. This store didn't have many options. I used to use this like pepper jack, cream, cheddar one by Campbell's. I can't find it here, so I just have a cream of mushroom that you will thin out with a little bit of milk. And I am going to use about a third of this package. You can also put in some veggies. I am here in the frozen section, um, kind of looking for a baggie of veggies that I can also put in it. It's basically when I was learning to cook and I didn't know how to do anything, you could take a pre-made sauce, a protein and a veg, mix it together and you basically have dinner. Um, which will get you started on your path to cooking. Oh, I also put rice in it. So like some veggies, some rice, the meat, and then the, the soup as the sauce, really, because I didn't know how to make sauces back then. That's dinner number two. To make one of my nights really easy, I picked up two cans of the bean with bacon condensed soup. Believe it or not, as someone who doesn't really like canned soups, the bean with bacon is always a winner. So with two cans of this and my homemade crusty bread, um, we have a really, really simple, inexpensive meal to get us through another one of those nights. Now remember, uh, my family also eats a ton of leftovers for dinners. Today I also picked up some onions and carrots as they're just really good bases for an easy soup or something like that. And the last meal that I want to make is this taco Mexican inspired meatloaf with some of this ground meat that I have with some mashed potatoes on the side. I am out of potatoes, so I do need to buy some more of those. So let's go find the potatoes and the rest of the ingredients for this meatloaf, which is like it's tortilla chips, salsa. Oh, I still have salsa from last week. Okay, I don't need to buy salsa, but it's tortilla chips. I definitely need the potatoes. The meatloaf calls for chili powder and cumin, which I don't see in a cheap bottle. So let's move over to the expensive bottles. <laughs> okay, cumin. Really? Really? Oh my gosh, am I gonna have to go to the really expensive ones? There is no cumin. I have an idea. Sometimes you can find cheaper spices in the Mexican food aisle. So let's go over there and see if they have it because this, uh, this spice aisle is no dice. I also wanna to top my meatloaf with some sour cream. I thought that would be delicious. Let's pick up a small container of sour cream. Go find our cumin, and I do need another can of black beans for that. All right, I found cumin, but it is not cheaper. Say so we're about done. Let's go check out, and I'll show you everything I got and the full meal plan. $45.17 later. This is not a very big pile of food. This is actually really, really shocking to me 
how little this is. So let me turn it around. I kind of divvied it up into meals for you. So let's, uh, let's go over what I got and the meal plan one more time. One of the dinners over here, this is the pasta jambalaya right here. All of the ingredients I need for this. This dish makes so much, so much. This can feed my family of six and have leftovers. So for a family of four, including small little kids, this would last a long time. And then obviously I have a Cajun seasoning for my pantry for later. Over here I have my super easy uh, bean with bacon soup with my homemade bread. The meatloaf actually is a large pile of food here. All of the ingredients I needed for this. Remember, I'm gonna be using about a third of this for the crepes that I kind of have over here. But I have more potatoes, an onion, my black beans, sour cream, my spices, again, filling up my pantry and refrigerator staples here. My beef and pork blend, some black beans and chips. And I'm not gonna need this whole bag here either. So I will have some leftover ingredients after this one is over. This is what I have for my crepes. Remember, I ha already have flour. I bought eggs here and milk. And I'll be using some of this ground beef with my sauce and my vegetables for that. Over here, I just have uh, my eggs that I purchased. These look nice. Wilcox is actually a local farm here in my area. They do all kinds of stuff, including potatoes. They sell a lot of potatoes. They have some potato farms. My fake butter, because I can't afford real butter at the moment. My raisins for my cinnamon raisin bread and my danimals for breakfasts for this week. Okay, hang on, because I am going to show you that no need artisan bread in the regular flavor and the cinnamon raisin flavor. So hang on, we'll show you that in a second. Breakfasts are super simple with oatmeal, eggs and toast, um, homemade pancakes with the yogurt, the yogurt with strawberries on top, all that kind of thing. Over here, I have my strawberries that are also going to be for breakfast, and I did get two pounds of carrots to snack on during lunches, and then I can also put together a really easy soup with the carrots, some of the onion, a little bit of the ground beef, and some beef broth that I might have on hand. Lunches are sandwiches and or leftovers, and then I have four solid meals to feed my family for the week for $45. So $69 last week, $45 this week. Is that 113? Am I doing that right? Unless you have some kind of food assistance or food pantries or major clearance food, it is almost impossible to feed your family for $100 for an entire month. It's really shocking to see how little my money goes these days compared to 10 years ago. Also wanna remind you that if you are struggling like this and really trying to keep your grocery budget low, make sure you do check out food pantries, senior centers, mobile food services in your area. Your library, your local school district should all have that information. And if you are pregnant or have a child that is five and younger, you might qualify for WIC, which does supply a good amount of basics every single month. The income requirements for those in the United States will be listed down below. Okay, let me put this food away and let's get started making that delicious bread. I have two bowls here to make my two loaves of bread. Over here is three cups of flour, one teaspoon of yeast, and one teaspoon of salt. You could also use a half a teaspoon of yeast here if you just wanna let it sit for about eight hours. I'm trying to speed up the process a little bit today. We're gonna to go for like a four hour rise. That's the beginning and all I need to do to my just plain bread is a cup and a half of warm water. That is all. Over here is the one I will be making the cinnamon raisin bread. So let's add our water to this one, mix it up, and then we'll finish this one over here. Now I just need to let it rise for a few hours. Easy. My cinnamon raisin bread, I have added two teaspoons of cinnamon. Actually, they were heaping. We'll just call it one tablespoon of cinnamon and a quarter cup of not packed brown sugar. Everything else is the same, the yeast, the salt, the flour. I just added brown sugar and cinnamon. And over here in this bowl, I have two thirds of a cup of raisins that I've been soaking in a cup of warm water for I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. I will now drain the raisins, add them in here, along with one and a half cups of warm water, and then stir. Okay, my raisins are in. Here comes my cup and a half of warm water, not scalding hot, just warm. And I have a stir assistant that's gonna stir for me. 
Okay, this is actually the texture I'm looking for more than the other one. I think I didn't use quite enough water in the other one. I live in a very high elevation and dry climate. I did add a touch extra water, but here's my dough. I'm gonna put some saran wrap on this and let this sit for several hours. To be clear, the bread dough needs to sit on the counter, on the counter, this does not go in the fridge, until it gets very bubbly. It's going to look very, very wet. Something like this. And you can let this sit out anywhere from eight to 24 hours, kind of depending on how warm your kitchen is. My kitchen is not that warm today, maybe 70 degrees. I live in a fairly cold climate, so mine takes longer. If you live in a warm climate, this would go a lot quicker. The next step is to get your bread pans ready. I will be using two mini Dutch ovens. This is a three quart, this is a two quart, and we're just gonna see which one cooks better. You can also use just a regular loaf pan, uh, but you are gonna need to use a second one on top. It does need to have a lid for this to work correctly. They are going to go into a cold oven and then we will preheat the oven with these inside at 450 degrees. There you go, cold and somewhat dirty oven. And we're gonna go 450 degrees. So when we pull these out to put the dough in, make sure you use hot pads for your hands or you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna burn your hands. Starting with a clean counter, I will do a little sprinkly sprinkle of flour. So I have my plain dough right here and I do have some flour on my hands so it doesn't get a little, so it doesn't stick to me, but it probably will a little bit. And we wanna get this whole uh, dough ball out and kind of mush some of the holes out of it and let it rest on this counter. You see how sticky this is? This is the way you want it to be, very, very sticky. It's gonna give such a nice texture once, once the bread is cooked. So a little flour on top, and we're just gonna do um, just a quick little flip. I'm not even really kneading it, I'm just forming it in a ball, something like that. Okay, this one is a lot more wet. You can see it kind of slide out of this bowl. So I'll use a little extra flour over here for this one. And I gotta tell you, this smells amazing. Like you would find this at a bakery, you would pay like $8 a loaf for this at a bakery, and you can make it yourself for like pennies, basically. A little flour here, and let's try our best to put, this one's super goopy, into some kind of a ball here. That's pretty close. Okay, we're gonna let these sit for 30 minutes while our pans are preheating, and then <laughs> wash your hands. It has been 30 minutes, so I am going to take my loaves of bread and place them in my Dutch ovens, which I have pulled from the oven. We'll start with the three quart, and these are very, very hot, so no touchy. You can sprinkle the bottom with cornmeal or use parchment paper, which is what I'm going to use today. So right, there we go. We will do the plain loaf, just like that. No, there's no grease or anything in here, just the parchment paper. And if you use cornmeal, it's the same. No grease or anything like that. If you have a nicer ball of dough than I do, you could like try and make an X on the top. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna worry about it. My cinnamon raisin one will go into this one. Just like that. Wow, that one's super sticky. <laughs> wash my hands all over again. These are getting covered with the lids, like this and like this. I don't know why that turned orange in the oven. That's so weird. This is a much cheaper Dutch oven than this one. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Anyway, lids are on and they are going back into the 450 degree oven for 30 minutes. At the 30 minute mark, I will take off. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. I'm gonna take these lids off and let them go another 15 minutes. I think this two quart one might be a little small. Um, the, the three is about perfect. So let's put those back in. 15 more minutes on that timer. Here are my breads. This is the just plain white bread out of the three quart Dutch oven. Um, I think a four quart would also work. As you can see, it's really, really hot. As you can see, um, it's cooked really beautifully. The crust is really nice. My tip for you is to not cut these for at least 30 minutes. Moving over here to the cinnamon raisin one. I don't think this one had enough room to spread out. It looks a little funny over here on the side, but it could be okay. So these do need to sit for a little while before you slice them. 
Otherwise, number one, you're gonna burn your hand, and number two, your inside texture is gonna be a touch gummy, so just let it sit. But the way I like to do these is to, once it cools, to slice it this way and then this way and store it in Ziploc bags. Mine never lasts very long. I have six people in my house, so this whole loaf would be gone you know, for breakfast. And then and then this one would be gone at dinner. <laughs> but I hope you try out these recipes and let me know if you would like me to continue with a week three on this low grocery budget month.